Thanks, Garrett. Um, back in Indianapolis, it's, it's good to be here. Uh, how many folks uh, use some sort of configuration management tool currently? Okay. Uh, how many folks use Puppet? About half use Okay, so like one. All right. Uh, okay, so I was going to give an introductory talk about what Puppet is uh, as opposed to the advanced talk. That sounds like that's probably the right thing to do. So let's, let's do that. Um, this is, this is the, the thing I often hear the most, is that why would I use configuration management or a tool like Puppet? All my systems are beautiful snowflakes and I'm not going to invest any time because they're all different. Uh, how many folks believe that? It's okay, like we don't have to agree on everything. All right. How many folks have heard that before when they try to implement configuration management from someone else on their team, a boss, something like that? Do you? Yeah. I obviously think it's it's crap. So um, <laughs> the the first one I, I often hear is this box is only temporary, and this one always makes me laugh. Uh, I've, I've I've never given a box to to someone and like provided a service to be able to just take that service away. Um, I could show you systems on the internet that make the make the tubes work that were only temporary. So that's that's much bull. Uh, the other one is this idea of replicas for pre-production environments. I think we've all had this problem where uh, uh, things work in dev, things work in QA, they get to production and everything blows up. Does anyone have that one? Yeah. And then, well, like, why is that? Because the environments weren't the same. Uh, you know, package uh, like versions were different. Um, it worked in Dev and QA because somebody put in the symlink to make it work that didn't get captured in your run book and so it failed. Um, yeah, so Puppet helps with that. Um, I normally give this talk in like an hour and so I'm trying to cut it to 30 minutes if I go too fast. Uh, tell me, if not I'm going to rip through this. Uh, disaster recovery. Uh, if something was important enough to build the first time, uh, you're going to want it after it fails. Um, all things fail. Um, before working at Puppet, I was working in Telco, and one of the things we do there is we talk about um, MTBF, so uh, mean time between failure, which is this idea of you put a lot of engineering in to build systems that never fail, but everything fails. So. Probably not the best idea. Uh, instead, I like to measure things by like um, um, MTTR, so mean time to recovery. So this idea of how fast can you get something back online, as opposed to trying to build these great like pinnacles of uh, engineering. Um, post on demand. Uh, so probably all doing cloudy stuff. This is my ubiquitous cloudy picture that I think you have to have for talks these days. Um, so I can spawn up 10,000 nodes by swiping my credit card. Okay, uh, like how do you actually manage those? And then how, how would you make a change across them? And so configuration management's really needed for that. How many folks manage uh, the images themselves? Right, so you like have an image, you know it works. Yeah? And not very well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like what happens is you get this, uh, this thing where you don't really know why the image works or what's going on, but you know that's the one. If you have uh, multi-systems talking to each other, you, have, uh, you end up with these like matrices of if these are at this image and this is at this one, and this one, like maybe it'll work. Um, that way sucks, so. Um, how many people uh, have built systems like clusters before by hand? Yeah, uh, and so I have, and what happened is they, they all gained entropy over time, and so they started to drift. And so uh, at inception, your systems were all the same and shiny and new, but then after a while, they started to have their own personalities. Uh, you see things like Mail 22, its queue is always uh, uh, large, or 
you know, web like 108, why is that system always slow to respond? It's because the entropy is like built up over time. Uh, uh, like change management, does anyone deal with this? Yeah. Uh, and so when you can manage all your systems programmatically, that means that you can shoot yourself in the foot at scale. And so uh, having change management around those changes becomes really important. In this topic, uh, kind of buzzwordy, but infrastructure is code. And this is the idea of we start treating our infrastructure like code. So we write code to manage it. We, treat, uh, we run things programmatically. We use tools that you would use like in your code, uh, like CI, um, version control. Um, how many folks now manage systems and maybe they'll write like a wiki page when they start and then how useful is that like a week later or, <laughs> or six months later? Our wikis are always up to date. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> and so being able to actually look at the code and see the system is, is huge. I mean, if you want to know what was going on in your app, you'd look at the code, but why is it when you want to know what's happening with your systems? kind of scratch your head and think about it, or you revert to the image you used before. Like, we, like we can use these same techniques. Um, we can also see like who did what by looking at the uh, revision logs. Um, we, we can know what happened by looking at diff. Um, before I was using config management, there was no way to diff what you know four admins were doing on the box. So um, that was big. Uh, uh, as an aside, uh, how many people write commit messages where they say what they changed? Yeah? That sucks. So let's, let's all stop doing that. Um, <laughs> Diff does a really good job about telling us what changed. I'm definitely like, guilty on this. Let's try to write commit messages that, that explain why we changed something and what's going on that Diff isn't going to tell us. So uh, if, you, if your eyes glaze over for the rest of my talk, Let's all like focus on that one. <laughs> um, Puppet's open source. It comes with your distro. Um, there's a ton of people on IRC, so if you need help, uh, pound Puppet on Freenode. There's a lot of people on the mailing list. It's not just uh, my company cranking out code. It really is an open source like, project. Um, <coughs> I'd be remiss if I didn't say we were hiring. Uh, yeah, for people to work in Portland, Oregon, or you could be like me and spend all your time on the road. Um, help is pervasive, lots of people like use us. All right, whatever. <laughs> we got an enterprise version, I'm not the sales guy. So, help, <laughs> how Puppet works. Um, Puppet's all about uh, declaring state. So Puppet's declarative, other config management tools are um, functional and you say this, then this, then this. Uh, Puppet, you, you, you declare state, and so we do that by writing code that defines uh, what we want things to look like. Um, we can then simulate what would happen without actually like doing it. Um, and then there's the normal mode where Puppet enforces like what happens, and then anytime there's a proposed change or a change, uh, you get a report to our report handlers. Um, for folks that have change approval boards, the simulation really helped me. I was on a team of like eight engineers, and when I joined in, we had a really bad track record uh, for maintenance events. And so after we implemented like Puppet, I could, I could see what would happen without actually like doing it, which meant that our maintenance events went a lot smoother, um, and that wasn't like running the gauntlet every time I went in there. So the stuff uh, you're all probably more interested in here is the modules. And so this is where we write code to uh, declare state of a given module. So you, we do this in the Puppet like DSL. Uh, so it's not, Puppet's written in Ruby, but the code you write is in Ruby. It's our own small DSL. Um, you can extend it with Ruby. Uh, I'll talk about that. Um, so you write different modules that, well, do modular things. So managing like Apache or Nginx or MySQL or Mongo. Um, 
And then once you have these different modules, you can associate them with uh, your different nodes to create roles. And so you can say, well, I have a web role, and so it involves Nginx and all these things. Um, what about, like, like what about? Have I lost people? Or eyes glazing over? Um, I can't really see anybody back here. <laughs> all right. Um, talk a bit about system stuff. If you're bored, tell me. Uh, so uh, this is best practices for all config management, not just Puppet. So we start with blank hardware. Uh, or lack of a VM, and then when you provision it to create this base install. Um, after that, Puppet would run and configure your system into the role you want it to be in, uh, but then it's also going to maintain that, that role. So, uh, as you, so you don't have the system drift. If the, if, your state, if the state of the system changes, Puppet's going to put it right back to where it should be. Um, how many folks get here and then they run some big uh, ball of like Bash and Ruby and then it, it makes a, a system out the other side? Yeah? Uh, and then you, you can build systems, right? But like, how do you maintain them? Yeah? Uh, you just build like new ones and keep doing that, right? <laughs> uh, so, so, in terms of best practices, this base install. Um, <coughs> should be the smallest amount of what it means to be a node on your network. Um, and then it, it, it would run Puppet, and then you would configure everything with, uh, like with Puppet. That way you have one place to make changes. Um, this is really good as well, so that you can run the same code, whether you're doing it in the cloud, you're doing it with Vagrant on your laptop, or you're doing it on physical hardware. It's all using the same process. So there isn't like magic here, and then things happen. You're always starting with that same case. Um, uh, you can tell I'm not a designer. I'm an engineer. Uh, so sorry about the awesome, the, uh, awesome graphics. Um, so like desired state, that could be something as simple as saying, <coughs> I want my pseudoverse file to be root root 0440. Um, so that could be just the like desired state. And so if it drifted out of that state and maybe the mode changed, uh, Puppet would see that, see that the mode was different, and then change just the mode back, uh, back to your desired state. And so besides just files, this is this whole like system, so services, everything that it means to be like an Nginx system, it like you would declare that, and then Puppet's gonna ensure that you're always in that state. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, Puppet uses uh, SSL uh, for all the transport, and so everything's over 8140 TCP. We use SSL certs for authentication. Uh, so if you get started with Puppet and you've got some VMs going and it's broken right off the bat, uh, you, you probably don't have time like set up, which is uh, often inaccurate on VMs, so you might want to sync your time. Uh, that's a pretty common error with, with folks. Um, so Puppet works, it's generally done in a pull mode, and so your systems wake up on their own. Uh, they send information about themselves to the Puppet Master. The Puppet Master then compiles this catalog uh, of what it means to be your system. So if you're a, a web server, it says, you know, here's all the resources to make Nginx happen. For instance, it gives them to the node. The node then diffs uh, the catalog versus reality, and if there's any changes, it applies just those changes. And so each puppet run is idempotent, uh, which means it's safe to run multiple times, unlike uh, the code that I wrote to manage systems that if you ran more than once, probably blew it up. Yeah. Um, so facts. Uh, whenever you run factor, it gives you a bunch of facts back. And so these are just uh, key value pairs. And so every time you run it, it collects all this information about your system uh, to send to the master. What's cool here is I can use these in, t uh, in my templates. We use ERB for like templating. Um, or I can use these to do conditional uh, like logic on. And so, you know, based on maybe the amount of total memory I have in a system, I can allocate uh, thread size, or maybe based on the amount of processors I have, 
I, I, I do some, you know, like tuning based on that. But that can all be done programmatically now. Um, so custom facts, um, anything you return in Ruby can be a custom fact. Um, I have this simple one that's not really do much in, in Ruby for a, a, a different example, but it shows you it's really easy to write facts. <coughs> The report handlers that we have are HTTP, HTTPS, syslog, uh, store, stores things in YAML format. So you can write your own uh, report like processor. Um, then we also have tag mail, which will send email alerts based on different bits of code. Uh, I, I, I like to use those for um, automated like uh, it, incident reports or like ticketing systems. You can have it create tickets if things change. That. So this is what really got me into managing my systems with Puppet, is that I talk about what and not how. So here I'm saying package NTP, ensure installed. I'm not saying use apt, I'm not saying use yum. Uh, I'm just saying there's this piece of software and I want to ensure it's on my system. Um, this, is, this is called a type. Uh, and then we have providers that actually figured this out. And so the the Puppet Master would actually take this code, turn it into YAML, basically, and give it back to the agent. And it would be up to the agent to figure out, oh, I'm a CentOS box, I'm going to use YAML. Um, it does this through uh, all the providers are written in Ruby. And so uh, we have this package here. And then like, this is like 30 some different ways to handle like packages. And so it's, it's easy to extend. Yeah. How do you handle things like that where they have similar names but different, such as, you know, like I think it's a bunch of uses DevL and then CentOS uses Dev as the on the end of the packages. So oh, oh, for the package so names? Like the same thing, but they have like different names. Sure. Uh, so for this, I actually abstract this out and I make these variables that I store elsewhere. And so I do logic that figures out what OS I'm on give that default value and let people override it, like that sort of thing. Um, that's a, a good question. So different resource types we have. Um, cron, exec, uh, package, uh, file, service, mount. So these are um, just abstracts we use when we're talking about systems. Um, like how many folks now are deploying their systems to something besides Linux? We got, we got one guy back here. Yeah. What what platform is that? Windows. Yeah. You didn't seem too e eager to give that up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We we just came out with Windows support. Uh, I think like two weeks ago. Um, other than that, we work on Linux, and it sounds like nobody here uses uh, AIX or BSD or Solaris. This is, this is probably our simplest design pattern and the most common design pattern that we have, which is package file service. So uh, most of the things we're managing <laughs> on Linux systems um, involve installing some packages, uh, you, you tune some things and some config files, and if you did everything right, a service will start at the end. Um, Puppet's declarative, we're not top down, and so we have to have ordering between these like resources. Um, we actually figure out the order of things by using a directed acyclical graph. Uh, so for you, you, you math nerds, um, I'm, not, I'm not like one of them, but it means we, like we don't have uh, like cyclical dependencies. Uh, so here I'm saying the file requires the package, so that I'll ensure the package comes before the file in the graph. And here I have the service subscribing to the config file. So that sets the order of package file service, but if my file ever uh, changes, it'll know to refresh my service, and so it'll reload uh, that for me. Yeah. Uh, Puppet supports file serving. Um, we do templates with ERB, so I'm sure everybody's familiar with that. Um, I don't need to go into that. Um, syntax checking. This is too small to read back there. That's OK. Uh, you should do it. We, we have code called Puppet Lint, 
that's out. Uh, and so I recommend people be running Puppet Lint over things as well as passing things through like Puppet Parser Validate. Um, it's really easy to write code that's bad. So let's at least not a, a accept code that doesn't pass like syntax checking and lint. So I recommend having those as uh, like pre-commit hooks uh, to your version control system. Um, So store configs, uh, we have the ability to pass data between nodes without knowing what the other nodes are, and we do that through using a proxy. Uh, we have a database that acts as a proxy. This is interesting because you can export information about yourself, and then the rest of the systems can import all of that. So where this is useful would be for like SSH keys for all your systems, or to export uh, I should be, I'm one of the web servers, and then your uh, proxy could then import all the active like web servers to build out its configs for doing like load balancing. Um, same with like backups, they could figure out which systems need to be in the backup pools. Uh, let's see with this, right on. Um, the, the, the big thing that changed when I started using Puppet to manage my systems. Like, how many folks now SSH into their box or uh, Mosh? Like, I, I, I just learned it in. Uh, so, really, that became indicative of a failure. Uh, when we started managing things programmatically, there wasn't a need to SSH in the systems. And so, anytime you did have to SSH, it indicated there was something totally busted, um, which I think is sort of a really cool state to, to be in a lot more fun way to manage your systems. Um, like, does anyone have questions? Uh, yep. How will this puppet work for just like a personal thing where you have, you know, maybe one DPS, maybe a couple, uh, you know, uh, Amazon instances? Uh, does it does it work well for just one or two things just to make life easier, or is it really meant for? No, I think so. I think uh, if the work you do, you want it to be replicatable and you want a log of what you've been doing to your systems, then it's worth uh, doing. Um, there's also some site out there that tracks like keywords for like uh, job postings and uh, the one for Puppet looks like we all wished our, uh, our, our stock and our startup to hit and it like jumps up into the right. So it's definitely also useful from a job perspective. Yep. Um, not to get too specific here, but you talk about with dependencies, you could have it so if that file changed, the service would restart. Mm -hmm. What if you had a dependency that if the config changed, the server needed to be rebooted? Does it handle that gracefully? Um, so, so you could do that. Like we don't have the concept of reboot there, um, okay. which causes an issue since we just started supporting Windows and like have things. <laughs> 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 But you could you you could have an exec that calls reboot that's refresh only, and so you could refresh that exec based on some some other thing. So if X happens, refresh the reboot exec, and it would reboot your system. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you can you can set that up. Is I mean, is there a way if I don't want my system rebooting without telling me first? Uh, I guess you could set you know, that up. Can it um, tell me like in my? control panel, hey, the, this machine says it needs to be rebooted? I guess it could send you an email, it could do whatever crazy stuff you wanted. I mean, it's just okay. executing a, a command. So if you wanted to hit some API that, you know, pops up a little screen on your laptop and blinks at you, I mean, yeah. it could do all that. Uh, I, I, I'd say if you're triggering like reboots, you probably have other issues There's, going on. There, there are a couple of very specific config things that we do that just Hopefully, you only ever have to do once in the lifetime at the server. Yeah. Are these Unix systems? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to we have to play with file limits and stuff. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I like don't believe it, but we can talk later. Oh. <laughs> I, I I do have another question though. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Like go ahead. So if, if it's monitoring all your services, could you replace a lot of what people are probably unfortunately using Nagios for with Puppet? Uh, instead of just emailing you, it could also fix the problem? So it can fix the problem. Um, so folks are using uh, technology that we have called mCollective. And mCollective sits on a message bus and queries all your systems. 
and then can take actions on the systems and return like data. Uh, so you could use a system like that for monitoring things, especially <laughs> in a cloudy situation where you don't really know what all your nodes are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Puppet's definitely not a direct replacement for Nagios. We have hooks into Nagios. Um, and the reason for that is, uh, <coughs> besides knowing what's going on, uh, Nagios also does lots of alerting. And so they're sort of like different different things that you, yeah. you would want to work to. I would just, if I can get an email that says, hey, I restarted Apache on such and such server, instead of, hey, you need to go restart Apache on such and such server, yes, that would be get, nice. Yes, yeah, so, so like you could do that with Tagmail, like one, okay. of the, like one of the report handlers like that we have. Uh, in fact, people often use that for like security things where they need to log uh, incidents. And so you could say, you know, if my SSHD config or my PAM configs or these things ever change, I want to send an email and open up a ticket, things like that. Um, I would stay away from sending out emails to say that it, things worked, because uh, then you get email clutter. That's like a different thing. Well, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you totally do that. Uh, a lot of places I've worked, it takes too long in my opinion to bring on new developers or is there any reason you couldn't use it for provisioning laptops and things like that? Uh, uh, so I know Google uses it for their workstations. Um, <laughs> I've talked to various school systems like that are using it. So not not everyone is using it for cloudy stuff or servers. Um, lots of folks are using it to to manage workstations. So yeah, you could totally like do that, uh, especially if you're developers are doing local development on their laptops as opposed to like a VM. Um, which I might do a plug for Vagrant here. Uh, but yeah, so you could... I think it would be great if you went back and made your environment get compliance and they changed it to the Yeah. But initial setup, I think. Well, not just initial setup, either like you can maintain that setup. So maybe there's certain things you want to happen for like security reasons, like you want to know they're getting updates and mm -hmm. different things. You can use it to ensure different baselines. Yeah. Oh, before I forget, uh, there's an Indiana Linux Fest this weekend. Is anyone going to that? Yeah, a few. Uh, so I'm doing an all-day Puppet tutorial there on Friday. Yeah, and so uh, I'm compressing what I normally teach in three days into one. So if you're interested, that's something to check out. Um, there's also a stack of pro that books like that I brought. Please take some so I don't have to lug them out of here. <laughs> All right, next question. Yeah. What's the easiest way to get started? So like, I have a bunch of servers up and running, mm -hmm. and I obviously can't like stop everything <coughs> to go set up the public config everywhere, and I'm sure I'll screw it yep. up. So. Yep. Uh, so, so one thing to do is check out our Forge. Uh, forge.puppetlabs.com and you can see all these modules that have already been built. Uh, so a lot of that's probably going to like cover a lot of things you already do. Um, but I would start small and uh, keep working on that. And so start small, like manage something that's a pain for you, like manage all your root passwords somewhere or your pseudo orders and then start building service upon service. Uh, until you managed uh, a whole system. So you say don't. So don't manage machine. Manage at a service level. So pick a service to manage as opposed to a machine to manage. Yeah, I think I'd go that way because then it, you're using it across all your systems, and uh, I think you'll learn more and you'll start to get what's going on. Eventually, I would pick a type of system like that you have. Like you're going to say we're to make sure all our web servers are like puppetized, uh, and what I do there is. I keep working uh, with Puppet uh, until I have it looking like the system that's already there. And then when I think they're the same, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm running monitoring ac across that, uh, like my tests, and then it eventually like play, like replacing boxes like that are there. Yeah. Yep. Is there any support for kind of compiling from source? Because usually things like Nginx are really out of date in the standard. Sure. Sure. So. so and anything you could do on the command line, you could automate with Puppet, um, but you wouldn't want to do that. You'd want to roll a package. Um, so how many people now deploy like tarballs to play to their site, and then like uncompress them, or they do build from source on their servers? 
uh, you've got compilers on your server, so that's going to make it easy for me to uh, roll the next exploit when I go to your next box. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, get those compilers off there. Uh, so, uh, has anyone seen FPM? Uh, FPM Package Manager by Jordan Sissel. Highly recommend that. And so, you can build your new version of Nginx on like some like build box, and then you can use FPM to turn that into a package, and then you can use the package manager on your system to install it. And that's 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 really the optimal way to go about things. Yeah. Are there any tools that will like reverse an existing machine into? Yes. Uh, there's Blueprint that does that. Uh, it uses a tool we have called Puppet Resource. Um, Show you what that looks like here. Um, Dave Jones gave a talk on Blueprint a few months ago that's probably up on uh, ndrb.org. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in that. So that just showed me the, the, that stuff. Um, so well, you can do it, all right? Like you could do this and iterate over all sorts of things on your system, but it's not really useful, I think, at all. At all. <laughs> but you can do it. Just because it's going to build out something specific to that system as opposed to like really doing things in a modular format, like where you say, this is how I model something like Apache, and this right. is how it would be everywhere. My use case would be like I have one box mm -hmm. that's not managed. Yeah. Like, can I get that managed and then? Start box two through N. Yeah, I, I, I would just think of it not as boxes, but as different services on those boxes and different components, and then you're writing modular code. Yeah. But, but, but this is also good to uh, start like learning mm -hmm. uh, the puppet syntax because you can say, well, here's this thing, how, how like how would I do it in puppet, and then you can use that. Yeah, that's a great question. Does anyone else have questions for me, Dave? Are there any issues running the Puppet Master and the uh, client on the same machines? Oh, like great question. Uh, nope. And so, okay. yeah, uh, you can run them totally on the same machine. So if you're just managing the one box, you can just have both installed. And yeah, you can do that. Uh, if you just had the one box, would you consider just doing uh, the Puppet standalone where you can say, Puppet just run this file? Yep. Yeah. So, uh, Alex is referring to the ability for Puppet to run without a daemon, uh, to run in standalone mode, where you actually just apply individual files. Um, you, yeah, you could do that, if that makes sense. Um, it's kind of, there's like trade-offs there, so different like use yeah. cases. If you did go that route, I would still want to write modules so that your stuff's useful, uh, and not just like one-off scripts. Could you like compare and contrast me with like Chef or other like things that are like this? They're all configuration management tools. Obviously, you can tell which one I think is the right one um, <laughs> and where I work. Uh, so I'm not really going to get into it more than that. Other than I feel like you should be using something. Yeah. Uh, I, I I would rather that something was my product, but uh, uh, it's important to be doing something. Yeah. Uh, and really, the only players in the field. Uh, would be us, Chef, and CF Engine 3. Uh, unless you have a ton of money to spend on Blade Logic. Uh, and then I've got a bridge to sell you. <laughs> Just as a high level, what's what's the difference with the public enterprise stuff? Um, at a, a high level, without doing the sales spiel here, uh, public enterprise lets us give you support. Um, but besides that, on a technical level, um, we repackage the software, including Ruby, so that we put it under OptPuppet and like our path, and that way our Ruby doesn't conflict with your Ruby, our Apache and OpenSSL and all that doesn't conflict with yours, and that way when your app needs to go to the next version, but maybe that has issues with Puppet, you know, there's not that like coupling there. Uh, so that's, <coughs> that's big for folks for freedom. We also have uh, our, our roadmap going forward is for the enterprise version to have enterprise type UI around the open source stuff, so people would be paying for these extra UI components. Yeah. Right, there's like a, a web interface for public config, public master stuff, right? And we do blue past those slides. Is that enterprise stuff? Uh, there's open source and 
enterprise, the enterprise has like a few extra things like dealing with compliance, and we have a GUI around <coughs> M Collective. Um, so this is our GUI around M Collective. So it's querying all the systems I have like running. Get out of here, chair. And so it's querying all the systems I have running on my laptop. I could filter those down by operating system or something, or you could filter by maybe what environment you're in. So maybe just my dev systems in this one area I want to take action on. And then I can do things like um, control puppet, like run puppet on all my systems, uh, start and stop other services, maybe update, uh, run app to get update or something. Um, so there's lots of things you could do with that. Um, People use the GUI to classify nodes to say what they are, and then it also has reporting. So here I can show like runtime, I get my reports, I get my output of factor, and I can go and look at reports and things like that. Uh, but that's also available as the open source like version, uh, it's called Dashboard. Yeah. Any other questions? We'll wrap it up here. Right on. Well, uh, like, thanks everybody for having me here. Thank you.